right, so Trinidad and Tobago, we are here with Inspire to yet another episode as we go across Trinidad and Tobago and, you know, touching with, Trinidad, you know, citizens who are not just in Trinidad but across the world who actually have been doing inspirational work and, you know, just flying the flag of the red, white and black. And, I mean, so those who are now seeing um, this version of the show, we are actually taking it into a virtual space because of what is happening in the country. So definitely something that we need to look at definitely as we move forward and safety is our first priority and our and safety of those who we interview is also priority. Michael, I know that is something that we hold deep and we also, you know, talk about, you know, the, the ability to keep safe during the pandemic. Definitely, definitely, Otto. And as we've been saying before in the past and we continue to say, follow the three W's. Wear your mask, use your hand sanitizer, social distance, and we can try to come out to this together. Vaccination is happening too as well, too as well. So if you if you can't get the vaccine, go ahead and get the vaccine. I know Otto got the vaccine. I'm still waiting on mine. Um, we're going to a story next where we're going to interview some people who have been doing some very innovative and interesting work through art. They're helping cancer patients. They're helping um, autistic kids, and they also help to help in the elderly. And they were able to go to the digital space, just like Otto and myself, we, to continue talking to their clients. Um, we're going to talk to Deborah next. And it was a very, is this a very interesting center? They, they, as I said before, they treat a lot of different clients with a lot of different issues. Let's go, Otto. What Deborah has done in this center is create a program that is for Nijon. So she would assess the student, see what he likes, see what resonates with him, and develop a system where it is used for him, for him to come out of his shell and he's able to understand better um, using her techniques because he's able to you know, to associate himself with whatever she's trying to teach. Hey everyone, okay, so we're closed at the moment, but we're gonna give you a little insight into what we do at ICT and basically what our center looks like. All right, so welcome to Inspire TT, yet another, yet another episode as we are in a virtual stage. Uh, where we're actually having conversations with, you know, people who are doing inspirational stuff across Trinidad and Tobago. And definitely um, what we want to tell people, as Michael has always been, uh, you, know, you know, championing the cause in regards of being safe and being able to protect yourself during this pandemic. And definitely we have taken this opportunity where we have uh, mm -hmm. stepped into the realm of doing Inspire in a virtual space. And today we have Deborah Hutchinson, um, who will give us a good uh, feel vibe story today what her NGO has been doing um not just for you know autistic but a very amount of people with different ailments that you know using art and using various strategies to be able to you know heal the body and mind so by right, and we're going to go to Deborah's interview as you have you just been saying Deborah has been working with a lot of different NGOs and, and she being an NGO herself Deborah you want to introduce yourself to the audience and exactly Okay, hi everybody. My name is Deborah Hutchinson and we run the ICTA, which is Inventions and Creativity Through the Arts. What we do is we are an NGO which is endorsed by UN. So a lot of our projects include the Sustainable Development Goals. So uh, healthy living and wellness is one of our main things right now. And at the centre, normally what we do is we have autistic children come, we have oncology patients and geriatric patients come to us for art, for therapy and other healing modalities that we use, Reiki, uh, SRT, um, yoga, we have a book club. So all of these things they use and they come to different sessions here which enable them to get healing, mind, body, spirit. But with the lockdown, obviously, there's some, you know, we have some hurdles and what we've been doing is going online. So we've had a really good response with regards to the autistic uh, children because as, as we know, even with school and online, not many children with autism have been given a facility to continue learning. So thanks to Kaizen Environmental and some other uh, people like CMR, etc., we were able to set up 
this sensory room that I'm in, and you can't really see much of it, but it's a sensory room with lights, etc. And we are able to now do online sessions with autistic children and families with children with autism. So that has been a real, uh, real help for parents. And we are trying to continue this program with the oncology patients. We've done more hands-on. So we're talking to them on the phone, checking on them every day, um, working with them, sort of, well, they were able to come one by one to the center and then now we had to shut that down. So it's really by WhatsApp and just talking to them on the phone and we're lazing with them. Not so much the Zoom because I don't think they want that um, forum. So that's basically what we do um, with the geriatrics. We had some Zoom sessions, but because they are not tech savvy like myself, <laughs> we had most of the sessions were basically, oh, we on, <laughs> right? So it was... So it was uh, a little bit difficult with the geriatrics being online. The entire class was basically, are we on? <laughs> right? So we decided that, that was not the way to go with them. So the same thing, we're using WhatsApp and we send YouTube videos, we send music. A lot of what we do at the center involves music because music is also a therapy. So a lot of it involves singing, etc. I mean, um, so really this lockdown has been difficult for people who need that one-on-one -on -one person to person touch but we are trying as best as we can you know how, how important it is for you to try to continue um your therapy for your clients and even though it is difficult time and, and as we say guys as you're watching the video this content share at the bottom of the screen this is to be able to help the center as well how is it is important or how important is it for you to continue helping your clients even in through these difficult times yeah, well, I think this is the most important thing because remember these centers like a place of refuge. They come here, they're able to meet together people with similar issues, which is a very big thing for the cancer patients because um, they find that sort of camaraderie with each other in this difficult time that they're in. With them being isolated, it's hard because they've lost that person to person touch. As well as that, they also are going through their own internal issues with you know going to the hospital and having stress and getting drugs and locked down and get in there when you don't have a car so it's there are a lot of other issues i mean generally everybody's going through a lot so everybody at this point needs some sort of therapy especially them so i don't think they need it more than anybody else right now because we what we have realized is during the time that we've had this lockdown in the last year and a half our following has actually grown because of Facebook, we post up a lot of positive uh, things and a lot of stories and a lot of pictures and a lot of different art projects that we are doing at the center online. And we found that we started to get a lot of following, even international, because people are looking for something to uplift them, raise their vibration, give them something to look forward to. So I think this forum with us keeping online and even though we might have fun and stuff. We are going to continue doing it because this is needed at this point in time. There are a lot of people that are not very happy and very depressed. So this is one outlet on the night when you go home. You, what do you do? You sit down and you scroll on your phone. You're probably watching the same thing 50 times. But you need some sort of human contact. So with, 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 with what is happening now, especially with COVID-19 affecting so many households and individuals in in different in different facets i mean what has been the the, the the need where have you seen the need when it comes to the center especially now that you don't have face to face where did the need come from which which pair of persons did, did the need come yeah. from so in the def definitely one of the areas that we have felt that we had to put a lot of attention to and concentrate on is the area with the autistic children because we've had a lot of people come to us and ask for us to uh, put them on the program. Now, the thing with that is no two autistic children are the same. So you kind of teach a class on Zoom. So we've been what we've been doing is trying to go like throughout the day and sort of go hour to hour to get with them. The other thing is I actually am a teacher. So I, I actually teach until half past two. So most of our classes are between three o'clock to about 4, 4 30 
But in any case, we only take them for about half an hour at a time. So we have different children that come on. And sometimes it's just a touch base. What we've done is we've created manipulatives um, using the avatars and technology that we have with us. So we've created their picture in an avatar. So what has happened is they've been able to identify with themselves and the stories. So we do, we did, a, I think we will send it to you. We did one for COVID and explaining why is it you are locked in? Why is it you have to wear this mask? Um, and one parent said to me, her child watched it 15 times because he was more interested in the avatar because it looked like him and he identified with the avatar. So we've had to find a lot of creative ways to teach and to send information to families so that it can help them because these children are locked in, like all of us, except multiply that by 100. So, you know, it's difficult for them. It really is. So this definitely, the autistic class, is the class that we have been focusing on. With that focus on autism and seeing more change, how are your clients especially parents, how has the feedback been like being able to change and still be able to provide services online? Well, the thing about this, a lot of parents were struggling before because they didn't have a forum. So actually, online has presented a new forum for them to actually have homeschool happening with, with their child, you know, where they can be in the environment that they're normally in. So this has actually been a good thing, which obviously happened out of accident but it has been a good thing for them so it's actually a positive for them because they are now able to now work on a forum at home remember these children there are no schools to say that you can carry them to where they cater for these children because they mean the spectrum disorder so i think things like this will help because each child is at a different level so I think it's actually a better thing for them to now have this. So this is an area that we're going to actually expand on and go forward with to create an online program uh, with as much as we could do so that everybody that comes to us will be able to have a free program. We don't want to be able to charge, we want to be able to sponsor it because we want it to be accessible to all. Dealing with an autistic child costs a lot of money and I don't think a lot of people understand the expenses that parents incur because of the disability that their child has. This is an area that we have gotten a lot of people to collaborate with us at this time, funny enough, um, to be able to expand the program, like I said, online and also reach out to families in need. I know that you, you have shared the challenges and the difficulties that the, the current climate has in regards to autism. I know that cancer patients is something that you all work with as well. Tell me how does that go? Because we know cancer is a prevalent um, sickness that a lot of people people face and are challenging in, in Trinidad and Tobago and the region and the world by extension. Like I said before, for we've, our strategy with that during this time is more one-on-one. -on -one. Calling them, picking up the phone, uh, a more direct approach. Normally we have a class session where everybody comes to, we have music, they have coffee or tea, they get a chance to chat. Like I said, we have the book club. The book club has actually gone onto Zoom. And um, some of them are logging on there for the book club. Other than that, like I said, we just send things direct. It's it's harder for the cancer group because they prefer a more uh, direct approach. They're not too into the Zoom. Um, and I don't think, I think it's more of a harassing thing for them to go on to Zoom to do it because it's like, it's school and it's supposed to be therapy. So um, I found that a lot of them are using more of the meditations, etc., that we send. And using this time to sort of in a reflection and you know that sort of thing rather than doing the group work. How how important, Deborah? How important is art, in your opinion, as somebody who teaches art and uses it as a form of therapy to the to the viewing public out there who may have parents who may have children who be artistic, even the parents who are artistic. How important is art now in this time of the pandemic? To be able to bring the families together and use it as a form of therapy too as well. You know I'm going to be biased, right? <laughs> so I'm going to tell you art is very important. So, but I will tell you something. I, it, it's also been a learning for me because I've been teaching art for over 25 years. Um, but being in, because I'm more, more in education, right? So teaching in education is different uh, to teaching, hey, 
at the center because now it's more I'm dealing with therapy side of art, which is so it's not so I'm not teaching like a class. I'm teaching more from inside the soul and that sort of stuff, more feeling. So I think you can merge the two because I've been actually using my work at the center to ask for therapy with my students because at this time they also need healing because they stuck at home for nearly two years especially my home ones because they haven't even seen where they pass home <laughs> right so art is an extremely powerful tool I am telling you even and I'm just isolated now with the cancellations I the, the sort of wood that you get. Of course, they come and they say, I can't paint, I can't draw. Well, you don't have to do that. Because the kind of work we're going to do, uh, you don't need to learn to paint and, or, or you need to draw or anything. You're just going to, you're just doing whatever from your heart. And let me tell you, some of the the mistakes that we get, or they think it's mistakes, some of the best pieces of art in terms of feeling and expression. A lot of the work that you do at the center with the conservation and the autistic trend is expressive art. So there's no formula, right? But I have been using that now in my teaching at school because I feel my students need that because trying to get them to cover a syllabus at this time, especially with no art supply stores being open, <laughs> you know, it's difficult. So now you have to think out of the box and say, okay, well, no, it's really about therapy. The art is a very powerful tool. I have seen some fantastic work from the children with autism, um, I've also seen some very expressive work with the patients that come in. From what they start off with, because we have a three-year cohort, from what they start off doing to what they do in the end, big difference. But it's something that they don't need to do here. When they leave us, they can stay at home and do it. So art is a very, very powerful tool. You seem to have a full plate. So, yeah. <laughs> what, what, what was that driving? Trust. What was that aspect that say, you know what? I want to be able to get involved and give back to my community. Because you're running an NGO. You're not doing this for profit. So, what was that no, inspiring thing? <laughs> it's like everybody else when they go into some sort of therapy. I guess it's therapy for yourself first. <laughs> so, you go into something like that because you also want to heal yourself. So, for me, I started off. Uh, being in the area for Arts for Health in 1999 in England, when I was in England, and I actually met um, Patch Adams. Not the movie Patch Adams, Robin Williams, but the actual Dr. Patch Adams. I went to a conference and he was there. And for me, that's what sparked it. His passion and his his joy for life, I realized, oh gosh, that's if you could work and do that and be so passionate and so happy, then something has to be right. And that's how I started, you know, lots of free work, still doing plenty of free work. But, um, but, and I think because you, when you make an impact on somebody else's life, you know, it makes yours better. So it's really just the love of it, I guess. And I love art, so, and I love music. So here we, I get the combination of both. Deborah, tell me something. You know, people mm -hmm. looking in and seeing that the, the, the power of art that can heal in so many different ways and forms. Um, tell me something. So someone looking into this interview, how could they be get in contact with you and even, you know, experience um, what you are offering, which is unique in its own way? Uh, well, we are on Instagram, right? Uh, ICT underscore center. And we are also on Facebook. Um, so they can get in touch with us there. If they want to get in touch with me, my number is on both forums. So they can just directly contact me. Most people WhatsApp me. And basically they can come down to the center and just be part of the class and just try it out and see if it's for you. I have a question, uh, Deborah. How many, how many hours do you sleep? <laughs> That's a real good question. <laughs> Uh, but recently, I've been really sleeping well because, <laughs> you know, um, we haven't had sessions. Normally, I get my six, seven hours, you know, but um, yeah, we do spend, but I, you, well, you've met part of the team this morning. So, uh, they are really, we really are a team. We work together. So, it, it's, it's, a lot, it's a lot of work sometimes, uh, constructing everything. Like, it took me a while to get the center going. And now we sort of have a system, so I get more sleep now. <laughs> it seems, it seems that you, you, are, you are having the, the, the best time of your life. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, 
but I am having I am having a very good experience at this moment. I, I think it life is about phases, and for me, my kids are older now. Um, my youngest is seventeen, so I'm at a stage where I am able to do what I I actually like and what I am passionate about. So yeah, I am looking forward to what's in store for me next few years. So definitely for those watching on now, we're here with Deborah Hutchinson uh, as she's sharing the transformation that she created through art for persons who are autistic and um, persons who may have cancer. Various different ailments and using art to heal. And definitely um we want you all to like, share, and even um, you know, spread the message across Tran Tobago as she's doing what she's doing, which is again an inspirational way that we try to, you know, share the stories of many of our Trin who have been doing, you know positive and inspirational work and even given the giving you one service to to Trinidad and Tobago definitely. So um Michael and if you have any closing questions. Deborah it's good to see that you're doing such good good service and, and you're up still providing the facilities for your clients. Um to all of you out there who may want to get involved with the center at this particular time, I know I know you need a lot of help still. Even though you're on the virtual space there is a lot of help. What what you can tell them how they can offer help and how they could continue building your network and your society there okay uh well we have just started a cancer support group so we people are now coming forward with that we actually put uh posters up on our instagram for people who would like to get involved and in whatever capacity we also have a section where we do work with young people with regards to sustainability in sewing and furniture so they upcycle and they, they create different things so that's an area they can get involved in with regards to the autism and the um, the actual physical work with the cancer patients we we have enough <laughs> a lot of people volunteer so we have volunteers but the other areas we're looking for people and we want to start a group for support for parents with children with autism Thank you, Deborah. Thank you coming, for, for coming here on Inspire TT. It was very interesting to hear your story and the fact that you are giving back to your community through art and the fact that the clients appreciate it so much. To you guys out there, share the content, share the video. Let's see if we can get more people interested in art. It's a form of therapy here during the pandemic. Guys, continue to follow the three Ws. Wear your mask, use your hand sanitizer and social distance. And we can all get out of this pandemic together so hopefully Otto and myself could come and visit Deborah soon and we Definitely. could be able to get one of your therapeutic sessions because I I, I, I assure you living in Trinidad there are so many things I can stress you out and this might be one of the outlets to be able to help Definitely. you yes all right Deborah it's a pleasure take care Deborah and I see you have really championed the use of the Sustainable Development Goals as a vehicle across a multitude of different educational approaches. At the community level, the ICTA Centre, through DEBRA, has designed a multitude of different approaches and educational practices around the SDGs that bring together different generations, people with different abilities, to learn within the framework of the SDGs about how to live more sustainably and live better together.